Our next conversation uh, coming up is in a partnership with our sponsor, KPMG. KPMG and Concordia recently held a roundtable on the role of multilateral financing in supporting technology for development. You can see a recording of this roundtable and other past Concordia programming on this subject on Concordia's website or reach out to our partnership development department to participate in future conversations. So joining us now from KPMG Nigeria is Boye Adamola, partner and lead for digital transformation. And he will touch on the importance of collaboration amongst African governments and the private sector for SME digital development across the continent. Joining him will be Benjamin Teta, a media strategist from Foreign Press Correspondents. Benjamin, over to you. Thank you very much. Well, from here in New York, I'll say good morning and good afternoon, Africa. And wherever you are, a very warm welcome for joining us. Uh, my name is Benjamin Tete, and thanks for your company. Well, Africa is being called the next frontier, and its countries are recording the fastest growing economies the world over. According to Forbes, 2019 was the best year for African tech startups. Then came the corona pandemic. So how are tech startups doing now? We take you straight to the discussion, and I'm glad as she's already been introduced to be joined by Boye Ademola, his lead with digital transformation at KPMG. Boye, thank you for your company. All right, thank you, uh, Benjamin. I think 2019 was indeed uh, a really important year for uh, tech startups in Africa. Investments in tech startups reportedly over a billion dollars. Uh, and we saw a number of significant investments in different tech startups uh, in different regions uh, and in different sectors. Uh, we noticed particularly that uh, that was led in the finance sector. So the fintechs, the heaviest investments were in fintechs on the continent. Uh, but the other areas also were seeing an uptick uh, in investments there, and that continues to be important. Uh, back to your question, from a COVID perspective, we haven't, uh, the impact of COVID has had, you know, uh, both very interesting, strong points and um, negative sides. One of the strong points really is that it's accelerated digital, the fact that we had restrictions to social movement, physical movements, uh, mm -hmm. meant that you know, users, uh, particularly in the retail sector, had to buy things, for instance, um, virtually. Mm -hmm. And that then we saw a real uptake with e-commerce and logistics. Uh, we also saw an uptake with uh, the fintechs. Uh, but in other sectors, um, it hasn't been as uh, interesting, for instance, uh, there were sectors that had certain challenges as a result of the economic slowdown. But on an overall basis, we continue to see investments uh, in the sector. Uh, recently, we had about the pay stock investments, uh, investments into pay stock. Uh, and we continue by Stripe, and we continue to see a number of those investments across the continent. So on an overall basis, I think it's been positive uh, on an overall basis, even though it's, it's come with its challenges for the startups. Mm. You, you mentioned fintech. Um, any other sectors with some examples that are also picking up? Well, I think, you know, we see this, uh, I mentioned uh, the e-commerce. So mm -hmm. e-commerce and logistics really picking up. Uh, obviously, there's more buying. In fact, the e-commerce now in South Africa is estimated uh, just that market to be over a billion dollars in terms of the revenue uh, that is estimated for 2020 just from e-commerce alone. And of course, that is, you know, fueled and enabled uh, by the startups and that will continue to grow. What we've seen is uh, that uptake across the continent. Uh, but we also seen this growth in other sectors. For instance, Cellulant is doing uh, really interesting things from an agricultural perspective, connecting farmers uh, and the value chain to retailers and ultimately to the corporates um, and also even to investors. And we continue to see uh, a proliferation of platform-based business models. Cellular being an example in agriculture. Um, we also, we, we're seeing care pay, for instance, from a healthcare perspective also um, coming up with a platform that users can indeed buy healthcare products 
they can save, they can you know, plan their healthcare products, and they can actually request for healthcare services uh, digitally. Uh, so we're seeing that across different sectors. Mm. What do you think accounts for this growing interest that we're seeing in tech startups in Africa? Well, I, I think, Benjamin, you know, what, what, what's important is that in Africa, we see that the incumbents have certain challenges that really have sort of stalled innovation. Or I can flip it another way and say that incumbents are finding out that the way to accelerate innovation, all right, is to collaborate with startups. Uh, and because by incumbent, you mean governments or? No, even private sector, even, right. even the private companies, uh, mm. even the private companies, the big corporates on the continent are finding out that, you know, because of the bureaucracy of the process, uh, the challenges with regulation, uh, the challenges with compliance, they're finding out that, you know, the fastest way, all right, for us to get new products or to explore new markets is by collaborating with startups. Uh, mm -hmm. So that is one of the real drivers of this. And then the other driver really uh, is the fact that we are seeing uh, we are seeing a number of startups that essentially are repatriates. You know, uh, sometimes it's uh, people who've gone to study abroad and who want to come back to Nigeria or come back to Africa or come back to Kenya or South Africa. And you find that a lot of the investments pulled through that comes back also tends, you know, they tend to have a relationship uh, with the investors that enable the investment pull through. Uh, into the continent. So investments are driving this, uh, and I think collaboration is driving this also. Um, you touched briefly on COVID. We'll come back to look at COVID, but also the opportunities COVID has created for, this, uh, for the tech, tech startups. Now, um, despite the progress in those sectors you mentioned, um, obviously there's still more needed. Uh, which areas do you see opportunities that could be exploited? And how much more do you see in terms of um, stakeholders coming together? Yeah, I, we think that these are really early days. Um, if you look at uh, the sort of things we're seeing with logistics, for instance, uh, logistics continues to be an area where uh, there are a lot of opportunities on the continent. We're beginning to see platforms like the Kobo 360. So Kobo 360 is a platform that essentially connects truckers, all right, with corporates and helps and, and wants to play in the whole value chain. Uh, from a logistics perspective, we see the pull through also uh, when we begin to look at cross-border trade in Africa. And that's really important uh, because of all that we're seeing with respect to cross-border trade and investments across Africa. So the, the, the tech startups, you know, potentially uh, will become the vehicle or the platforms that enable this entire Africa trade that we've talked about for a while. So that's one of the things we're seeing. But we're, we're, it's a bit sector agnostic. We're seeing it in entertainment. All right. So there's been quite some uptake. Of course, people are, you know, being at home has meant that obviously entertainment, people have had more time for entertainment. So there's quite some pull through from an entertainment perspective, from a health perspective, agriculture, I mentioned. But it's also, Benjamin, it's also important to say that one of the drivers of what we're seeing is the fact that Africa is building, in my view, a formidable payment infrastructure. Uh, that is really understated or somewhat not well understood um, out there. Uh, and I'll give you examples of this. Generally, when you speak about payments, you know, we know about um, Safaricom, Mpesa, right. for instance, but there's a lot MTN going on. Mobile money, MTN Momo, and all the rest. Exactly. Uh, but there's a lot going on across the different regions in Africa in terms of enabling payments, not re not just retail payments, but mm. enabling the SMEs. SMEs really are the engine for growth in Africa. Most people are employed 
uh, by SMEs and enabling the SMEs to uh, for their products and services to be consumed by an online audience or an online uh, population is really, really important in terms of the social and economic impact that it brings to Africa. So that payment infrastructure, which, which looks like it's going to come together with all the inter-Africa trade discussions and the cross-border collaboration we're seeing with the payments uh, platforms and the fintechs has a real solid potential for enabling growth in other sectors, not just uh, in the finance sector. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's 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 a real significant opportunity that in the next uh, three to five years we see that as a real uh, game changer. Interesting. Well, this is a 2020 Africa initiative, and we are looking at the social and economic impact of the African tech startups. Um, Boye, you mentioned uh, cross-border trade, and let me just take your thought on this. Um, we all are celebrating the the birth of the African continental free trade area. So definitely, Absolutely. since you mentioned cross-border trade, yeah. I thought yeah. I would have your thoughts on that. What do you think? And what impact do you see the, the continental free trade area coming into being? I think it's a really significant um, initiative uh, by the governments uh, and stakeholders in Africa. I think the time, you know, it couldn't have come at a better time. Uh, we know that most of trade um, between African countries right now is really a fraction of what it could be. All right, so that is in itself a clear and present opportunity that needs to be um, sort of harvested in a very deliberate way. And that's what uh, the AFTA does for this uh, whole opportunity. So in my view, I think really important, I think the timing is excellent. And I think the way the vehicle is going to come together in reality, uh, I see that the startups are really going to play, play a big role there. We have a startup, for instance, uh, Kobo 360, you know, mm -hmm. their, their, their platform, which is a logistics platform, but logistics also is very much part of that whole trade value chain. And, and they've built on blockchain. And, and the next discussion they're having is, how can we scale this for African countries? Uh, given that we have the, the, the Continental Free Trade Agreement now, how can we scale this platform, this blockchain platform, so that we can move goods around the continent uh, in a safe and in a secure way? Uh, so those sort of um, uh, startups, um, whether in logistics or whether in supply chain or ac actual fintechs, really are going to play a role in ensuring that uh, the objectives of the Continental Free Trade Agreement are realized. We're close to um, getting to the end of the year, and yet COVID is still here with us. It's not gone yet. You touched on it briefly about the impact, but also the opportunities. Let's now look at the opportunities. And um, any good examples, but more so, what more can our industries do from our small-scale kiosk by the roadside our favorite restaurants that offer us the the watches and the jollof rice and the rest to be able to move online. What more can they do in your view? And which ones are already doing pretty well? Good examples, maybe if you can give. Yeah, I think for the small um, businesses in Africa, um, mm -hmm. it's really important that they begin to sort of key into the fact that there are startups that are offering solutions, largely now via APIs, uh, application program interfaces. And, and what the APIs do is that they allow you to call a product or a service without you having to do the technical integration that was the legacy way of connecting uh, to, to, to other companies. Uh, and so I'll give an example, for instance, we're seeing um, fintechs now offer API so that you can pay for COVID tests regardless of where you are in the world. As you know, a number of countries have adopted testing before you leave the country and mm -hmm. testing to visit the country. We have uh, fintechs like Flutterwave now that have provided API so that regardless of where you are in the world, you can pay for those COVID tests. These mm -hmm. same APIs are being provided to SMEs and SMEs also have a responsibility, in a sense, to become aware of how to engage with 
these startups and really bring their products online. I, we think that that's the key to scaling and that will bring about, you know, the, the social impact of that uh, mm. has a multiply effect down the value chain that is, is really difficult to quantify. Interesting. And indeed, um, I have been following and seeing good examples from Senegal with quick real-time testing kits to um, yeah. Sierra Leone, where this company that had dealt with Ebola now transitioned to dealing with COVID, yeah. to Ghana yeah. producing emergency PPEs and all the rest. Um, yeah. But as we conclude, um, uh, Boye, as we conclude, what will be your final word in terms of hope and how can companies to position themselves to take advantage of this huge interest in tech startups? Well, I think, you know, the it, it's important for us to take sort of, uh, to pay attention to the startups that are able to scale their products across the continent. Africa is, 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 a, is a different market in a sense, but we share a lot of similarities across the continent. So when we see startups that are beginning to scale across the continent, I think it's important you know, for stakeholders, for investors to pay attention to them. The other, the other uh, important point is around collaboration. We think that uh, the corporates, governments uh, that are really going to accelerate innovation, um, bring out, previously underexplored markets, underserved markets, new markets. We think that the key to doing that is by collaborating with startups, all right? And we're seeing a number of corporates and governments invest in hackathons, invest in hubs across the continent. I think that needs to pick up. Uh, and then from a regulation perspective, we think that we're going to see uh, a lot of the regulation sort of scrambling to keep up with um, what we're seeing because of the scale of um, uh, the startups, especially the ones that scale. They can scale very quickly in two to three years. They are at a scale that really many times governments and regulators just didn't see coming. So uh, there's a flurry of regulations coming to ensure that, you know, the risks are properly managed. We're going to see, I think, a number of that in, in, in future. And the key mm -hmm. is how to sort of work around these constraints and still achieve the objectives uh, set out. Well, um, viewers, thank you for joining us. Boye Ademola is with KPMG Africa. He is the lead in digital transformation. My name is Benjamin Tete, and thanks to all those who join us on the social and economic impact of African tech startups. Um, thank you, um, Boye, once again, and thank you for all, all the right. viewers. Have a good one.